almighty and everlasting God. Yes. Fathers, again, that we humble ourselves in your divine presence. Mm -hmm. Dear God, we come before you acknowledging that you are God. Beside you, there is none other. Yes, Lord. We submit ourselves to your God, and we commit ourselves to your will and your way. We openly admit that we don't fully understand what that means. God, we don't know exactly what we have to give up or what we have to do. Well, but dear Lord, we're willing to follow you. Yes. We pray that you would encourage our heart to renew our mind, strengthen us, oh God, that our resolve would be to stay close to yes. you. Hallelujah. That we would follow after you, oh God. That we would follow, walk in your footsteps and we would do what you commanded us to do, yes. oh God. That yes. our desire will be to please you, to bring you glory, yes, God. to bless your holy name. So, God, we pray that you would equip us for the journey. Make us ready, oh God, that we might yeah. do what brings joy to your heart. Master God, use us to your glory, to yes, your Lord, God. We thank you for all that you have done and all that we have done to offend you. We pray that you forgive us, oh God, yeah. that you would cleanse us and yes. renew us and make us right again with you, yes. that we can follow after you, oh God. So we give your name praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. Most of all, God, we give ourselves into your divine hand. Yeah. And we pray your will be done. Yeah. It's in the blessed, eternal name of him who is yet alive, Jesus, who is the Christ, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Give an honor Amen. to Almighty God, who's in deep God Almighty. And everlasting unto everlasting. He is God. God. He's yes. God. honor in this place today for he alone is worthy yes, yes. has no equal no opposite Hallelujah. none who can even be compared unto him Hallelujah. he is God yes, he is. who has the metric that's sufficient to measure who our God is Pastor. there is no characteristic that God has that we can attempt to measure or put to some kind of scientific test we don't have the apparatus to even fully understand or define God's nature. So how can you measure what you can't understand? All right, Pastor. We serve such an awesome. Yes, we do. And magnificent God. Yes, he, Lord. He doesn't only defy our knowing, he goes beyond mm -hmm. our finding out. Right. He is an awesome, awesome God. And we give him honor in this yes. place. Yes, amen. amen. Give honor to my bride. My all right, amen, the Reverend Vivian L. Right. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Thank God for her. Amen. And she still got some running in her. Amen. Thank God for the Lord. Thank God, Jesus. Amen, amen. Thank God for these preachers. Amen. amen. Thank God for I know they're my children, but they just full of fire, ain't they? Amen. They, they thank God for them. And, and, and I thank God for all of, of you who made your way here so we can worship and glorify God together. Praise God. Praise but we serve an awesome, awesome yes, God. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. If you have your Bibles, come go with me to the book of Proverbs. Jesus is still able. Yes, he is. He is still our way out. He is still the answer to questions we have and even discover we need to ask him. Yes. <laughs> he is an awesome, awesome God and we will learn to hear him. Proverbs chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Well. I don't know, I don't know why the Lord just asked me to join a, a set of series. Um, so we gonna we gonna we're gonna start another one series. Amen. Uh, today. So let's look at Proverbs chapter three. We're gonna read verses one, three, mm. five, and six, and then we're gonna drop down to twenty-seven. Okay. All right? Yes. Proverbs chapter three. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. Three, let thy mercy and truth be safe. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Yeah. Verse five. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yeah. And do not lean to your own understanding. Yes. Yes. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Yeah. And he will make your path straight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 27, chapter 3, verse 27. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due mm -hmm. when it is in your power to do it. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come again. Well, Tomorrow I will get it, when you have it with you. Do not plan evil against your neighbor with, who dwells trustingly beside you. Do not contend with a man for no reason, when he has done you no harm. Amen. Do not envy a man of violence, and do not choose any of his ways. For the devious person is an abomination to the Lord, Holy. but the upright are in his confidence. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, mm -hmm. but he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. Yes, yes. Toward the scorners he is scornful, but to the humble he gives favor. Mm -hmm. The wise will, will inherit honor, but fools get disgrace. Today, mm -hmm. we're going to focus on verses, verses 27 and 28. Let's read it. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, when it is in your power to do it. Mm -hmm. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come again. Tomorrow I will get it, when you have it with you. Praise our God. Praise God. We're going to be talking over the next three weeks uh, about trusting God as a matter of love. Because Amen. when we fail to trust God, it's, it's, not, it's not because life has gotten too hard. It's not because the situation is too, too dire. It's not, it's not because we have too much to lose. It's, it's we, we fail to trust God really because there's a love issue. The, 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 the issue the issue is that we can't love God enough to submit ourselves to him in his will mm -hmm. now it's, it's not it's not it's not it's not a, 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 a issue or, or a statement of condemnation it's, it's just where we find ourselves in this this earth suit we we were humans and and we we struggle with with natural things. And, and the more we discover about God and the more we can submit to God, the more we can love God, the more we can trust God in our day to day. Mm -hmm. It's hard to trust someone that you think can't handle your stuff. All right. mm -hmm. It's hard to, to trust someone that you think that can't, can't, can't have you and, and your situation at, at their best interest or, or act in your best interest. It's hard to give your stuff to somebody you think might drop it. All right. All right. You think that they may not give you what you what you need or, or what you have assessed yourself of having the desire for. This is what my situation requires. And if someone is speaking or something suggests that they can't give you what you have assessed the need to be, it's hard to get yourself over to it. Okay. It's hard to, to give yourself to someone who feels like their commandment is to, for you to further expose yourself. Yeah. But it's, 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 it's really an issue of us loving God enough to trust him. Amen. God, do I love you enough to trust you in spaces that I don't understand you? My, 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 one of my mentors said that, that what makes beautiful music is not the sound, but it's the changes in the silence. Mm -hmm. You see, you can't have music if, it, if it's just one long yeah. note. Yeah. That becomes noise. Yeah. But, but music happens when, when the, 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 the notes and things begin to change and the silence and breaks. And, yes. and, and that's when the rhythm happens and that's when music is discovered. And many times in life, we're afraid of the change and the silence. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and we, 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 we prefer the noise of life rather than the music of God. We, we, want, we want it to continue to, to make noise and to move hard and don't quit. We, we become comfortable with the chatter. Rather 
rather than finding solitude and comfort in, in, in the, the rhythm of, of God's love and compassion for us, even though we don't understand what's next. We, 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 we go through life affected by stuff we don't pay attention to. Okay. Minister Smith said that, that GPS, sometimes we don't listen to it. Oh, well. Well, sometimes I, I, it's over, but other stuff is happening in my life and I ignore it. Okay. okay. I don't do it intentionally. Okay. Yeah. It's just I'm distracted. I, I, I'm so comfortable, so used to the road that I stop listening to it. And I find myself way up yonder somewhere, I gotta turn around, not because I didn't want to listen, uh, yeah. well. but stuff was happening, yeah. and, and I didn't hear it when it told me to turn. Yeah. 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 I, I, I missed it when it said that you should go a different way. Oh, and, and it wasn't the GPS was, was somehow my enemy. Okay. It was just I was, I was convinced uh, by other stuff. That it was more important. And we find ourselves fighting so hard against life and life challenges that we, 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 we miss what God has called us to do and what God has called us to be. I, I admit to y'all, there's so much stuff going on in my spirit right here right now. I'm trying to get it out of the way that makes sense. But there is so... There's so there's so there's so much in this thing right here. But anyway, <laughs> we get stuck, okay. and we spend so much time fighting against that which hold us uh, that we miss opportunity to be set free. Right. All right, all right, yeah. 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 all right. Well, well, well. We had worship service here a little while ago, and it was a real rainy, rainy, rainy couple of days, and a van got stuck right outside in the mud. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They were spinning their tires and putting boards under the wheel and putting rocks under the wheel. They were, and all they were doing was getting deeper and deeper and deeper in the mud. No matter what they did, they kept getting deeper because their focus was on trying to overcome that which was holding them. It wasn't until a chain got hooked on the front of the van yeah. that pulled them out, ignoring what was holding them, that they were set free. What I'm trying to tell you is stop fighting your addiction, stop fighting your, your, your sinful living, and hook up to Jesus. Stop giving so much attention to what is wrong and hook up with the one who can pull you out. Measure 
good. Without I have to worry about being judged, criticized, talked about, what comes out of me? What kind of questions do I ask myself? You see, you can discover, you can discover where you are in your journey by what kind of questions you ask. And, and, and asking questions is kind of like a number line. Yeah. <laughs> Same questions in both directions. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Just one's positive, one's negative. Uh -huh. You see, when, when you ask a question, when you, you're dealing trying to find out where you are and what you're up with, I ain't even got you yet. But when you're dealing with what you are and how you're dealing with it, you're going to ask questions. One of the questions you're going to ask is on both sides is, is what is the will of God? Now the negative question is, what is the will of God? I don't know it. Don't hold me accountable if I don't do it. I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what you want from me. But on the positive side is, what is God's will? God, let me know your will. Let me know what you want from me. See, one says, I, and I don't know. The other says, God, you know, let me know how to do it. Same question. Just moving in different directions. You can ask yourself, the next question is how? How? How am I going to do God's will? How? How am I going to do what I don't even know what it is? How am I going to be faithful? I don't know what. How can I be? How can I do it? And everybody just talked about me. How can I trust you? And everybody has hurt me. How can I know you're real? I don't understand. How can I? How? Well. God says, God, I know it's going How can I do it? Lord, I know you want me to forgive how. I know, God, let me know how. Let me know. Let me know what you want me to do. When you want me to do it. How you want me to do it. You see the difference? One is a passion for God. Yes, yes, yes. Sir. yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And the other is a call to take care of self. Glory. Jesus. One is saying, God, I'll do your will. Oh, mm -hmm. And the other is trying to justify self for, for doing what you want me to do when you want me to do it. Yeah. Now, here, here's, here's, here's where you know that, that either, either, you sold out, or you walked out. Either you sold out, or you walked out. Is when you start dealing with the question of why. Why should I do what you want me to? Why should I believe you? Why should I give up myself? Why should I forgive them? Why should I do what you say? Why? What's in it for me? Why should I do it? Well. Well, the other side is, why? Because you're God. Why? Because you're king. Why? Because you're Lord. Why? Because I love you. Why? Because you love me. Amen. Why? Because you said yes. so. Yes. This side, why? I don't even understand what you want. Why? I don't need to understand. You said it.
see, if I don't care about doing God's will, God's way, I can live over here and I'm good with it. And when people criticize me, I get mad because how you gonna judge what I choose to live? But when I want to do God's will, when I want to serve God, when I want to magnify God, then there's a struggle. And when you challenge me, I don't get mad. I repent and move forward. So don't be mad. Either be satisfied or repent. But don't be mad. Either be good with where you are or repent. And let's move forward. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. It's okay though. Okay. It's okay. You see, because what the gospel do is cut stuff off you. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're afraid of a, pu- of a pruning knife, well, then what happens is you slice up the gospel and you grow no fruit. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. But this is this is this is. This is what I'm trying to get to. You see, because it don't have to be that way. We don't have to live like that. God didn't create us. He doesn't instruct us to live like that. This text sounds like prohibitions, but they're not prohibitions to put restrictions on your life. They're prohibitions to help you. See, it's not not about God telling you what you can't do as much as God telling you don't do that because there's something bad on the other side. It's it's, it's, it's like when we tell our children, we go around and we save God in our house and we we, we baby baby proof our homes for our young children. And then we tell them as they grow up, we start taking the little plug out of the socket. As you old enough now know, that don't put that in there. We're not going to have baby plugs in all the sockets and you're 22 years old. You ought to know that what's in there is going to hurt you. So there comes a time when God takes the baby plugs out of your life and he says, don't mess with that. So now we're in a situation where either we can venture where he is protecting us from prior, or we can hear what he says and don't do it. Glory. It's a prohibition. Yes. But it's a prohibition for our good. Yes. Yes. It's a prohibition that he's taking time to teach us. And you yeah. ought not be let, you ought not want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. See, if you can, if you can get to everywhere else, you've got to go on time. <laughs> And can't get to church on time. If you can be excited about going everywhere, and can't get excited about worship, if you can call your friend and say, Guess what, man? I got tickets. I get to go to the game. But at the end of that conversation, say, But I got to go to church the next day. There's an issue. You see, if you can be excited about going one place and feel a burden to go the other, See, I don't want to be, I don't want to be one of the blues songs or an old rap song to talk about the problem All right. without trying to get some kind of solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, because I think the Bible gives us solutions. Yes. How do I break free? How do I hook up to each other? How do I get, get unstuck? How do I appreciate what God is doing? How do I make the switch where I can be excited? How do I do it? Well. And, and here in Proverbs, the, the, the old wise man, the, the, the teacher is telling his students, say, listen, this is what I'm, I'm telling you something about the Lord, and this is what you do. Okay. You hide the words in, in your heart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, why heart? Because heart is the center of your essence. It's the, it's the center of your being. The heart is where you are, who you are, but as long as you're going to be who you are. Then it's here in the heart. That's where you are. It's the heart. It's not, you're not what you look like. You're not what you feel like. You are not your body shape. You are not the size of your, of your biceps or your hips. No, you are the essence that dwells within you. Don't talk about who you are and you act a different way. You are who you are, who you act like, because what you act like flows out of your essence. Oh my God. Oh my God. So, so you listen, how, how, how you doing? Well, he says, hide it in your heart. Hide, hide my word in your heart. Hide, 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 put my word in, in, in your 
your heart. Because it, when my word is dwelling in your heart, what it's going to do is going to create a, a, a reaction that, cre that changes how you see the world. It's called worldview. It's going to change how you see the world. And if you start seeing the world a different way, that changes your character. Yeah. Because you see, you don't need glasses to see worldview. Right. It comes yeah. from within. Yeah. It, it's, not, it's, not, it's not what's out there. It's how you see what's out there. Yeah. It's, it's not what they do. It's how you see what they do. Yeah. And you have a world. You know, it is not what they are, what they're worth. It is the worth you assign to them based upon who you are. See, you determine another's worth based on your own self. Yes, yes, yes. It's how I see you. It's world view. So he says, go ahead. Take my word and put it inside you. That's what the Lord said. The Lord says, look, the Holy Spirit will not only be with you, he's going to be what? In you. What's he going to be doing? Revealing everything to you that I told you. He's going to be your guide. That's what the Proverbs teacher is saying. Get the word inside of you. Now that's where God is going to direct you. That's how nobody has a GPS outside the car. The GPS is inside. God directs us and guides us. Stop blaming folk for, for the, the turns in your life. Stop blaming folk for where, where you went off the road, where you drove on the shoulder. Stop blaming folk because you should have thrown the black eye. Stop blaming them! Every turn you made came from within. Every choice you made came from within. Every decision you made
Most of us hold love back based upon who we think is going to help. I can't love them. They don't know what they did to me. I, I was in need. They turned it back on me. How I'm going to love them? See, that's not God. That's right. See, because when, when we get God's word in us, it does something to us. Jesus. It transforms us into yeah. the image of God, Old Testament, the body of Christ, New Testament. We look like God. He transforms us. And we begin to look and act like God. We begin. You know how it is. You grow up, you say, you say, I'll never do what my parents did. I'll never act like my parents. And the older you get, the more you surprise yourself. The more you look like them, act like them, talk like them. You see, because what happens, what happens, what happens is there's something inside of you and that you don't recognize until it's time for it to grow up. And when it starts exploding, you start saying, oh, I, I recognize that. Show up and they, and they start to build up your life 
Make sure they're building up a, a true foundation. Hallelujah. When you when people follow you, make sure they're following a true foundation. Yes. Don't teach them that church is optional. Don't teach them that Jesus is just yes. one. Don't yes. teach them that yes. the word is almost right. Don't teach them that good is good enough. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Be true. Preach, doctor. Come true. Preach. True. Because you learn to show mercy. Okay. But where did I get it from? Mm -hmm. You got it because his word is on your heart. Mm -hmm. See, that's why. That's why you can watch TV all night mm -hmm. and can't read your Bible five minutes. Come on, Pastor. That's why, that's why. Well, there is a reason. A reason. There is a reason <laughs> why blockbuster devil music <laughs> or, or, or devil movies <laughs> have all the lights, cameras, and action. Come on. A Christian movie, we say, hunt for Why? Why is it so hard for us to listen to or watch anything Christian? Come on. Why is it so hard for us to pay attention, focus on anything that glorifies God? Come on. If it's, if it's, if it's not glorifying God, we can listen to it. We don't even have to like the beat. We can even choose the beat or the lyric. We, 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 really, we can say the movie, I hate it that good, but I watched it all. Why? Okay. It's because the enemy already has a hook and he's already got you stuck. Come on, Pastor. It's not until we get the word of God in us that the things of God become exciting. Yes, yes, yes. The things of God become exciting. Why did they first thing you were running around here? <laughs> The world can say emotional is. Before yes, we know, yes. say God is moving. Yes. God just said something to him. Yes. Brother Prince cries all over the carpet. Yes. If you say Jesus to him three times loud and fast, he might just go cry. Why? <laughs> well, well. It ain't because he's sorry, it ain't because he's weak, it's not because he's emotional, because he's in tune and in touch with a God that dwells with him. I know, I know, I know. 
I know, I know, I, I do the best I can. I give the best I can, but but giving tithes and offering that just for everybody else because God understands what I'm going through. Come on, Pastor. What would you do if your boss okay, on payday okay. told you, okay. I know I owe you okay, $500, okay. but all I got is 50 and it's the best I can do. Make it plain now. Would you show up the week after and the next week? And he kept telling you, look, I know I owe you 500 okay. but hit 50 is the best I can do. So to, to take that 50 and, and, and be smart with it. Take that 50 and know I'll do better when I can. How many of you? Oh, 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 let's, let's make it even worse. Let's make it even worse. You go to the bank and put a thousand dollars in the bank. It's your money. You put it in the bank. You go back to get just a hundred dollars. And the bank says, we can't give you a hundred dollars a day. We can give you 20. How many of you going to have the police call during that day? See, that's what, that's, what, that's what we do with God in every phase of our lives. God give me every breath. How many do we give back? God give us every step. How many do we give back? He give us every dollar. How many do we give back? He gives us every thought. How many do we give back? How much of our lives do we give back to the one who gave it to us? How much of our lives? And sometimes when we, when we rob God, we tell God that he understands why we robbed him. Because we couldn't trust him enough to pay the rent on the apartment he gave us. God, I had to rob you because I needed more of your money to put gas, your gas in the car you gave me to go somewhere that you never told me to go. <laughs> we act like that and we do things like that, church. Not because we're bad people. Not because hell's got a hole. We don't do it because we're the devil's imps. We do it because God's word has been evicted from our lives. We do it because there's no hunger for God. Yeah. When there's a hunger for God in this word, then we don't do those things because yeah. God transforms us. Hallelujah. And out of us flow a love and a desire for him. Jesus. So I'm not saying you devilish on your way to hell. Okay. I am saying that you're stunting. I stunt my growth. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. By yes. telling God who he is, pretending that I'm God. Okay. Yeah. We have to come to the place where we listen to the wise sage. He said, take my word. Put it in your heart. There's a rhythm to Proverbs. I didn't read it. You can read it. But the rhythm, at least through like verse 9 and 10, is you do this and you get that. All right. You do this. And you get that. Yes, yes. You do yes. this, and you get that. There's a rhythm to it. Yes. But then the rhythm starts changing. The rhythm starts changing is this is who you are. This is who you should be. This is who you are. But this is who you should be. And then the rhythm keep on. See, we get caught in the beat sometimes and this what it's doing. Then the rhythm keep going. And the rhythm gets to the places. Don't do this, and you'll get that. Don't do this, and you'll get that. But see, we miss it. Yes. All we hear is the don't, don't, do, do, don't, don't. No! God is making music. There's a song that's coming from the page. 
my son, forget not my law. But let thy heart keep my commandments. That's what you do. This is what you don't do. For break the day and long life of peace shall thy hand to me. This is what you do. Let thy mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. And this is what you get. So shall I find favor and the good understanding in the sight of God and man. God is making music. We got to hear it.
and, and, and uh, uh, I'll get to the text next week. But but what we need, what we need. ourselves to him. Yes. To give yourself to him don't mean accepting him into your life. Oh. Mm. The primary thing is we give ourselves mm -hmm. to him. Yes, sir. That means we give our lives yes, to him. Yes, that means everything we do, all that we think, all that we believe, all, of who, all we hope to be, all of our energy, all of our imagination, yes. we give to him. And not give it to him like fix it and give it back. Yeah. We give it to him and say, take it. Yeah. Do with it whatever yeah. you will. Yes. This, my life is no longer mine. It belongs to you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So stop crying because it hurt your feelings. Uh, it only hurt because you're holding your own life. Uh, yeah. God, hold my life. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like, oh, God. It's like when I look up and just laugh at it. It's like, this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. This is it. It's like I went to the doctor and dentists and all of them seem like they say the same thing. They go ready to do some kind of procedure. They got knives and scissors and, and, and things. <laughs> and they go ready to do some stuff. And, it looked painful. I see some stuff like that on TV and everybody screaming when they jump. It looks painful. But they always start the same way. I've been to the eye doctor, to, to, to the dentist, and, and other, they start the same way. They say, you're going to feel a little pain. <laughs> Yes. 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 What you gonna do? Yes. Let us stay. 